Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. This is episode number 26, titled Building a Complete Website in a Day, with uh, Chantel Edward Betsy here with us. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? It is going well. I'm uh, incredibly excited to learn how the hell you can build a website, a complete website, in just a day. Absolutely. I think we're getting spoiled to this and we say every week how excited we are to have a show, but it's because we get to completely control what we're having on it. So it's like, ooh, this looks super interesting. Let's talk to them. So uh, hopefully everybody else finds it the same way. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Actually, uh, I'm going to give the floor here to Chantel in just a second, let her introduce herself. But I will say I originally heard her story on how she does this on Lee Jackson's podcast. It's been a little while ago, but uh, I, I was super excited about it then because one of the things I love to do is get things done quickly. So this is right up my alley, building an entire website in a day and then not having to deal with that back and forth from a customer for the next six months while you try to figure out what they want their website to say. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Chantel. Why don't you tell us all uh, a little bit about yourself and what it is you do? Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for the invite um, to come on. Um, yeah, it's super cool to be on your show. Um, I've been following your podcast. Um, I watched that one about how to do high-performing portfolio websites, like making notes. The whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm Chantel, and I have a, a business called One Day Webs, um, and I build websites in a day, and that's that's the short and sweet of it. Well, we are definitely here for the uh, the long and bitter, if that's what you want to uh, contrast it with. But um, I mean, yeah, like how how is that even possible? Yeah, it, you know, it's possible when you you put the responsibility for the content in your clients. You know, it's the it's there in in Darba, as it were. In South Africa, we have a term called Indaba. It's their problem. Um, so, my model is meant to appeal to people who are prepared already you know so my typical clients they already have a business coach of some sort they've probably had a photo shoot already they've maybe worked with a copywriter and they have their copy all ready to go and they just literally need to build their website um, and then they come to me with all of that prepared so I, I literally get everything and I just get to bring it all together and if I don't get everything up front, um, then I either don't build on that day and we postpone, um, or I build with lorem ipsum, which they replace when they are ready. So, so that's basically how it works. So I imagine you you got to this business model. This is my guess, or maybe foggy memory of the podcast I listened to. But I imagine you started out like most of us, going back and forth yeah. with clients and trying to get projects done. So is that kind of what led you to down this road? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I was, I was about to give up on, on having a web design business. I had the most frustrating clients. I had, I literally had one project that went on for over 18 months for like a basic brochure style website. And I felt like I built it five times over for one lot of money with one very difficult client who was, you know, nitpicking over every little thing. And I was just like, this is craziness. I mean, I may as well be paying them to do the website, you know? And that. <laughs> so it was just nuts. It was just nuts. I was like at my lowest point. I was literally in bed sick. And I was trawling Facebook as you do in the morning before I had a baby um, when I could trawl Facebook on my no phone in the morning. And um, I happened to see somebody, and I think it was on um, the Beaver Builder group. I'm a Beaver Builder you know, junkie, fangirl, whatever you want to call me. Um, and on the Beaver Builder group, somebody posted something saying, hey, you know, we, we overrun with work or whatever. Is anyone interested in taking on some work? And I was just kind of following the thread. And um, these two Aussie guys commented, Um John Mather and, and Grant Ambrose. Mm -hmm. And they both had businesses um, called uh, builderwebsiteinaday.com.au or, or something like that. Um, they were both sort of website in a day and I sort of pricked my ears up and went, hang on a second, what is, what is this? And I, of course, went to their websites 
um, as I'm sure anyone watching this will go to my website. And I was like, this is genius. Why aren't we all building websites this way? So yeah, I, I did a, literally did a bit of research, um, went and saw a lot of other websites of people in the UK doing this thing, uh, this kind of thing in the US. You know, it's not a new concept. I didn't invent it by any way, shape or form. Um, but I just thought with my personality, that is exactly the answer for the problems that I was having in my business. So by the end of the day, I had found my URL and built my site and I just decided I was doing it and that was it. You built your own site, didn't they? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think that's interesting too. Like a lot of people talk about niching down because you can focus more on the clients that you're really looking for. But usually when people talk about niching, they say, I want to work with restaurants or I want to work with this industry or that industry. But there's a lot of other ways to niche. And you've essentially created a niche by saying, I'm going to build your website in a day. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I still am quite uh, niche down in terms of the kind of clients I get. Um, I'm more sort of uh, creatives, female entrepreneurs, massive amount of coaches. I do a huge amount of really successful coaching websites. Um, So it's all like photographers, coaches, female entrepreneurs. That's very much, so I'm even further niched down, as it were. But that's, yeah, I mean, that's, I find the more niche I get, the more, um, yeah, the more the more popular my offering is, the more bookings I get, um, and the more I increase my prices, the more bookings I get. Mm-hmm. That's a magic <laughs> formula. Figure. It is. It's great. <laughs> and so, it's did great. you? Fi- did, you know, you talk about those typical clients you work with. Is that something you you were seeking, or is that something that the niche kind of just fit really well with? It did. You know, I'm, I'm obviously a female entrepreneur. Um, th- this wasn't my first business. I'd had a completely different, well, I'd had several businesses. I'm a bit of a serial entrepreneur. So I was very comfortable in the female entrepreneur space. Um, I'm also very active in my local networking groups and that kind of thing. So that was kind of like my, yeah, comfort zone. Um, but I'd never worked with international clients before. And now most of my clients are international. Um so it's just amazing, actually, the the tra- trajectory of my career changed completely when I made that decision. You know, four years ago, I was just some arbitrary web designer using theme forest themes. And, you know, in Durban, in South Africa, in the arse end of Africa. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and it's funny I because never- we, um, we've, we've spoken about it before, but, you know, it's difficult to to sit down and be like, you know, what's my niche going to be? You know, like, yeah, it's almost impossible. It's it's yeah. uh, it almost seems like, you know, how it happened to you and how it happens to, to many other people is it your niche kind of finds you and it just, you know, you you get that that light bulb in your head. and You're like, holy cow. Yeah, these are the people that I want to work with. Yeah. And like follow follow this, you know, just follow like where your passion leads you. Absolutely. Yeah. And one thing you notice when you go to your website right away is it's, it's, it's so focused on exactly what people are going to get, you know, so there's no questions. Like you said, before you were kind of this generic website designer, like the rest of us are generic website designers that do whatever, whenever, for whatever, you know, uh, however that is. But, you know, your, your website is very personally branded, so people know exactly who they're working with. And I imagine that attracts a lot of the, the types of clients you're working for, too, because they're kind of in that yeah. similar vein. Yeah, absolutely. That that was a big turning point for me um, because I changed this whole, you know, I've changed over to One Day Webs. I built this very ugly site in one day that was not personal branded. It was all black and red and um, wheeze and utters and, you know, like uh, all that kind of thing, you know, trying to make it seem like it was a business and not just me in my home office. And they were like, nothing was happening, you know. <laughs> Four months later, the old work was drying up. There wasn't really any new work coming in. And I was like, oh, gosh, have I done the right thing? Um, And fortunately, I've got a a friend who is a business coach, and I was coaching with her at the time, and she kept, you know, harping on personal brand, personal brand, and it never – it was always uncomfortable for me. And it's a lesson that's never comfortable for me in any of my businesses. And in all of my businesses, I seem to go through the same process. And when I eventually decide to put my name and my face on things, then they – suddenly take off. 
So it was literally that. I just stuck my face, as you can see, all over my website. <laughs> and the orders came in. So I was like, okay. But, yeah, it makes sense with my clients. That's the kind of site they want me to build. So that's what appeals to them, mm -hmm. you know. And that's something that's a pretty amazing lesson too that you know we we do we have this like curse of knowledge that we're stuck in our own industry all the time and we speak in all these terms and we forget to look at our website like a customer is going to look at your website and and I get a lot of compliments on my website from other web developers and I don't really have <laughs> clients call me up and say oh your site's just so beautiful I mean I think my clients like my work or they wouldn't hire me but at the same time most of my compliments are from other web developers and that makes me think like you know, who have I really focused the site to? So uh, yeah. that, that might be something I need to go back and look at. But I know yeah, everybody's going to be curious as to like, how logistically right. can you get a website built yeah. in a day, especially it sounds like you don't have a large team sitting behind you all working on different things. Um, so, one talk day. <laughs> yeah. so talk yeah. us, to us a little bit about the logistics of how is that possible? So um, I use uh, Book Like a Boss now, thanks to you. Nice, nice. <laughs> I've been through a couple of solutions. I started with WooCommerce Bookings, but it didn't do that Google two-way sync until about two weeks ago. Useless. <laughs> so <laughs> changed it out to Calendly. And I didn't like that because I couldn't send people coupon codes. So, yeah, thank you for Book Like a Boss. I've now changed over to Book Like a Boss. So people book me. Ahead of time, obviously, whenever there's um, space in my schedule, they pay me ahead of time uh, in full. And when I get that booking, I send them an introductory email, you know, thank you for your booking. Um, tell me a little bit about the project. Um, basically, a little bit like the prep guide that you can download on my website. And then I also share a Dropbox with them. And we just kind of open the conversation. Um, at this point, my, my VA and my automation basically takes care of things during this period, uh, checks in on them periodically at certain, you know, time spans before the build day. And I don't really come back around to them unless I get an email from them with questions until two or three days before the booking. And at that stage, I normally like to log into their hosting. I typically build on their hosting. Um, because they've paid me. So it's not, you know, it doesn't make any difference. They can't steal my work. Um, and so I log in, I make sure that their hosting is appropriate, install whatever plugins, theme, whatever, you know, create demo areas or whatever I need to do a couple of days before. Check what's in the Dropbox. Put off little emails if there's anything that looks uh, like it's not prepared properly. And then... That's it. Build day arrives. <clears throat> Excuse the frog. And I um, I start building. So I normally take about half a day to do the homepage. That for me is the longest time because it's all getting it just, just right because I don't like them to see it until then. And then I wait for feedback and then build the rest of the site out either in the afternoon or the next morning. So... So you mentioned the prep guide, and I know that's something I looked at after I uh, I heard heard about this concept. So, what goes into people needing to prepare for doing this, as far from the client perspective? So, just getting their content together. I mean, I'm not an expert in their business, so they need to give me the words. I don't write it. Um, half the time, I actually don't read it. <laughs> I skim read it. <laughs> And pick out headings. <laughs> so I won't pick up your spelling mistakes. Um, and I'll probably copy and paste the same spelling mistake across from your Word document. I still but, do that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, that's what my VA is for at the end. <laughs> so, yeah, I expect them to really just be able to give me all the information that I need in order to create them, present them online. So great photography. Um fonts, you know, if they're purchasing fonts, graphics, um, and the words, that's it. And then they leave it to me. Also, a little bit design calendar, new event. Sorry, that's my calendar. Also, a little bit of, uh, <laughs> let's make sure we close that. You just got we? a new booking. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, it works. You can do this. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, where was I? Yes. Uh, any, yeah. 
any design elements they need, and then also inspiration. So typically they've told me, you know, I love so-and-so's website, or they've given me screenshots of other websites I've done for people and said, I want it like this person's, and I want it like that person's. So then I just kind of look at all of that stuff and then give myself creative freedom. Very cool. So um, when it comes to uh, the, the clients delivering this, uh, this copy to you, um, yeah, what, like, do they ever struggle with what they need to say? You know, there's, there's certainly sure. going to be different call outs, different CTAs for every different business. Um, so for those that haven't seen your site that haven't seen your, uh, your pack, like what, what questions are you asking them beforehand? So you know that you've got all the copy that you're going to need beforehand. So I um, I actually try and encourage them to connect with copywriters, business coaches, et cetera, if they don't have. Um, if that's not within their budget, um, then I, I do send them uh, a little bit more fleshed out information. So like my prep guide on roids, really, um, where I ask them about their ideal client avatar, basically. For me, the most important thing is who is your client so that I know I'm putting the correct message across. Um, you know, like who you're speaking th there's to. no point of your client. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if your client is male mechanics and I'm doing a, a, a blush colored scripty font website, I mean, that's not going to work, is it? You know? right. so, not as well as for, it could. <laughs> no. I'm sure there's some male mechanics out there that would love it. You know, let's not exclude them. Love it. Yeah. I, I actually have male clients who owns a vacuum cleaner sales place who contacted me and said, I'm so sorry, I'm not a woman, but I really want to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> My website is a woman. So terrible, but anyway. Yeah, so the important thing is who their client is. Um, you know, what LSM, I mean, I want I want as much detail about their client as possible. I mean, sometimes I get more information out of them about their client than actually about their business. Mm -hmm. um, and then if, if, if areas are really not good enough, I send them examples. So I'll, I'll bang it right back to them and say, please, like you need more in this about section. Have a look at these sites for inspiration um, and try and you know, come up with something a little bit more meaty. But it's their, their website and their responsibility at the, end of the, at the end of the day. So, yeah. So when build day actually arrives, I know, I know what you're saying about spending half the day on the homepage. Cause that's usually, you know, yeah. with the tools we have now with, with Beaver Builder or Elementor or whatever, you, there's not a whole lot of reason to go sketch this out anywhere else because we can do it just as fast in the browser. But I do spend like the majority of the beginning of the time, just kind of like throwing things at the screen and seeing what makes sense until yeah. something clicks and you start going with it. So how do you find like creatively, uh, is that harder for you because you kind of have this deadline or does that actually make it easier because you know you got to get this stuff done? Yeah, I think I think both, you know. Um, I'm Personally, I'm very visual. So I normally start with pencil and paper and I wireframe, you know, the, what I think are the important bits in the layout and the order of events, as it were, for the page. Um, and then I typically have, I've got a really huge 27 inch Mac, which I couldn't do with that. And I sort of have my browser open in a third of the screen. And then I have design inspiration open, you know, next to me. And I just kind of start playing with that, you know, so you'll start out, you'll sort of copy something from somewhere, you know, you've seen a nice Instagram post and you kind of like that design ethic or whatever, and you're going, you know, try and copy, replicate it or whatever. And then you tweak it with what they've provided. And yeah, it just, it, it becomes its own thing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's true. I mean, like <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, every one of my clients has a, uh, a, a Pinterest board that's uh, private. I can only, you know, I'm, I'm the one that sees it, but throughout, yeah. you know, the, the discovery, the, the speaking with them, like the entire development process, like I'm on there, I'm looking at, you know, any kind of inspiration that I can pull in there and then style biting a bunch of different yeah. sources. And that's the thing. I think people get hung up on like, I know a lot of like developers that come at this from a developer standpoint and not the design background, like me and Matt come at this from a different angle than a lot of the people in the group, but they get kind of hung up on this, like, how do you design part? And I think 
you know, if you take some sort of inspiration that you see over here, but take your customers' fonts and colors and all this, you'll end up mixing up something together completely different. So you're not necessarily just taking somebody's idea and repurposing it, but that's kind of that's kind of how you start, you know. None of us invented design, so. No, exactly. There's no original ideas out there. There are no original designs. I guarantee you everything you do has been done before on somebody's website. Yeah, you know, and that's it's even, just, yeah, exactly. I think that thought's even multiplied when you go into people using page builders because unless you're doing a bunch of custom work, you're kind of working within these confines of these are the modules and these are the customizations you can do to it. So there's all like, there's a, a billion different combinations, but there is a finite number of how many different ways you can really do this, you know? So um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. No. And, and let's be honest, if you did reinvent the wheel, it probably wouldn't work very well because when somebody lands on a page, they're expecting to see a certain type of layout. And if you change or alter that too much and it's, you know, confusing, then you're going to, you're going to see a bounce rate that you don't want to see. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I preach brother. Cause that's, I have to tell my clients that all the time. Oh yeah. My clients do not like templates. They all think they are completely of course they are, but we don't have to completely change the way an online course looks or the way an online shop functions <laughs> because people will be lost. <laughs> right. You want to right. do something exactly. really, really crazy with the navigation bar? I would suggest not. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason all of our pants have two cool. legs in them. Right. Yes. <laughs> So let me ask you, a, a yeah. big part of my business is like recurring revenue with doing care plans and stuff like that. And that's something that's really like lessened the the stress burden on myself is that I know I have so much coming in every month. So is any kind of recurring revenue po model part of what you do? Yeah, I do. I, well, I have a couple of things. Um, hosting, hosting is one of the things. I mean, it's not a primary income for me. Um, but a lot of my clients, they just want to deal with me, you know, as I'm, I'm sure you experience the same. They don't, they're not technical. They don't want to be dealing with a hosting issue. They don't know what happens when emails don't work. They just want to get hold of me. Right. So for those people, I host their websites, but you know, hosting is not a big money spinner. Let's, let's face it. Um, and then the other um, recurring income model I have is a package I have called uh, DIY web to wow which is basically for people who can't afford to have me build. And it's a DIY set you up, includes the hosting, includes Beaver Builder and all, all the tools that I use. And I basically add the, the logo, set up their sort of header and footer, as it were, and a blog layout, and then hand it over to them to actually build out pages, et cetera, along with some videos and, and access to me and, and all the rest of it. Um, and so that has a then a recurring, you know, it's it's not a big one off upfront payment. It's a recurring model, and they only get the benefit of all those licenses and setup and hosting and all of that as long as they're still on that package. So I have I have that, um, but yeah, that most of it is builds for me. Most of it is builds, um, and one of the things that I'm actually bringing in now is a sort of a. VIP offering. I haven't named it yet, but I find more and more of my clients are um, the higher end coaches that want the whole hog, you know, so they want me to set up an online course for them on their website, do the five pages, add in two or three sales pages with thank you pages um, and basically just like the whole hog, you know, that's bigger, you know, connect it up to their list, set up their marketing automation, so basically set up the, the the IT side behind their coaching business, for example. And so, yeah, I'm going to be bringing in that VIP offering because I'm finding more and more of my clients need that and would prepare to have that, or be more prepared to do that. Um, so that's going to be more in the sort of $5,000 range. Hmm. And then very limited of how many of those, I only do one of those a month. Um, so if I'm booked for the next three months, you can have me in four months time kind of thing. Right. So the rest of the, the normal package you offer, it's pretty productized as far as here's the standard website you're going to get and here's the price for it. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my normal one day web, it normally goes over two days with time differences as well. Mm. So I'll normally do the, the first half a day is when I build the homepage and then I send it off to the client and await feedback. And then sometimes, you know, we on different time, we often on different um, time zones. So I wait for that feedback to come and then finish it the next day. So it takes me a day, but you know, it's normally a half a day and a half a day. Hmm. Um, and that's a, that's a, um, I think it's about $1,500 now on my website. I can't remember. I put my rates up in January, whatever it is. <laughs> and um, a one-page landing page I do for about $500, I think. So, yeah, those are the sort of basic products, as it were. So have you found any They're type very- of – I'm sure you've had some trial and error uh, going into this and kind of figuring out how all this is going to work. So – if somebody is interested in this model or is wanting to try it out for themselves, is there any type of customer or any sort of scenario you can warn them against where this probably isn't the right model for? 100%. Uh, two things. You have to be the right kind of developer or designer. It's not for everybody. Uh, uh, be a very paralysis by analysis person you cannot be indecisive you can't you know you need to be uh, you know highly driven fly by the seat of your pants you know pull a rabbit out of a hat kind of person um, and it's, it's not suited to everyone's personality if, if you're not if that's not your thing if you're not like driven by pressure and whatever then don't do it just don't do it to yourself please um, and then <laughs> the type of client Yes, I have an extremely specific kind of client and everything about the way my website is done is done to appeal to those kind of clients. Um, You know, I'm not interested, again, in very analytical people. If you want to go and read every word of my terms and conditions, please don't come back to my booking form because you are not my kind of client. (laughs) Like, seriously, my client wants to buy by the time they've got to the end of, like, you know, they are hardly scrolled past the fold as it were and they're like where do i sign up Mm -hmm. kind of clients you know it's typically um you know female entrepreneurs it's small businesses people that there's one person if there's a committee that has to agree about the color i'm using don't book me yeah (laughs) i can imagine i I was kind of thinking that in my head working with like non-profits would be very hard or or people that have some sort of board like that because you just you're yeah. never going to get things impossible. done in a timely fashion. No, impossible. Absolutely impossible. Absolutely impossible. So I'm looking for decision makers, that kind of A-type personality. I know the specific personality type that I'm looking for. And yeah, that's who I really target. And I'm sure after doing it for so long that uh, you know, as soon as you get them either in an email or on the phone, like you can probably tell right away what kind of person you're talking to. Immediately. Yeah, yeah. Immediately. Uh, absolutely immediately you know within I I typically hop on a a Skype or a Zoom call and within 15 minutes I'm cutting it short if I can see it's not the right kind of person Um, but yeah it's 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 as clear as day and that's why I have a VA because I'm very bad at telling people to move on uh, go away (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, so building on the, uh, the previous question that Kyle asked, um, like, so if any of our, our viewers or listeners are interested in trying this out, like for themselves, what, um, what ducks do they need to get in a row before they start this? Like, you know, what, what do they need to be asking their potential clients? What, uh, what, what types of materials do they need set up before they start doing this? And I would add so, tech stack too. I'm sure having a very yeah. like streamlined tech stack is important. So that, that was where I started was the tech stack. Like I wanted to make sure I could actually physically do what I was planning to do. So that's the first thing is make sure your tech stack is sorted, that you are 100% comfortable with it. Um, you know, that, yeah, I mean, you just need to really be, you need to be good at building and building fast. Mm. So choose your stack well. You want something that's reliable. You definitely do not want, you know, I've done 380 websites in the last two years. I do not want any emails coming in when an update is released and something breaks on somebody's website, you know? I'll know. So choose your stack well. Um, Make sure you have relationships with the people that 
created those plugins, themes, whatever you're using, you know. So if I've got a problem, I'm getting in touch with the people that wrote them and saying, how long is it going to take, Puneet, to fix this power pack issue? <laughs> like, right, right. Can I call my client an hour from now? <laughs> So, yeah, make sure your tech stack is there and then actually do some trial runs. You know, even if you have to take on, you know, charity or, or pro bono work or whatever, actually do a trial run. Like, can you actually do that? You know, if somebody gave you a Word document and some photos and said, I want a five page pages, go for it and time yourself. Like, how long does it take to get the, you know, install the plugins, install the theme? What's the most time effective way to do that, you know? Do you FTP it up? Do you install it the old-fashioned way? You know, do you have a site, a base site that you deploy? Like, just figure out, like, how you're going to do the, the the technicalities, as it were. Like, I'm quite a geek. Like, I'm I'm a, I'm a great designer, but I'm also a propeller head. So I want to make sure all that stuff is, is sorted. Um, and then in terms of the clients, yeah, you have to have a checklist. I often um, tell people that... Uh, is it, it's called Content Snare, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's called Content yeah. Snare. I mean, that would be, a, I don't personally use it because, as I say, I put the responsibility firmly uh, sort of Neil House. But if I was more involved in getting that information out of them, um, I would use something like Content Snare so that you've got, like, forms set up that they have to, like, pop their stuff into, um, yeah, so that they can get you the content in the format you need it. Yeah. And what's neat about that too, and I think would be a really good fit with this business model is that uh, with Content Snare, you can set up kind of base templates of of recurring stuff you're always yeah. going to be asking the customer. So you basically have like little blocks you can pull in, you can build this package for your customer and send it off to them and they can fill it in whenever. So that's, that's pretty neat. You know, you, you yeah. mentioned, you know, it being you, you have to be the right kind of developer or designer to do this kind of thing. And it's funny because I, when, when this conversation between you and I actually started to get you to come on our show and talk about this, it's, it started with a thread where I've kind of accidentally built a website in a day uh, twice now in the last month or so. And it was just because the, you know, I didn't set out to do it. It's just because I happened to get all the content up front and I'm like, I can knock this out. And I'm kind of that personality too. Like, I'm, I call it super impatient. I don't like to wait for anything. I want shit done yesterday. Like, let's get this over with and move on to the next thing. So yes, I, I, I think I would be a good fit for something client. like that. Over, over <laughs> yes. But, but it is amazing yes. when you, you know, I think we all kind of think that this, uh, this customer who comes to you with all of their stuff prepared is like a figment of somebody's imagination, it's but unicorn. it can't happen. Yeah, it's it's a unicorn, but when it when it happens and you can make it happen, it it completely changes the entire development process. Like your job is completely different because of it. Exactly. So here's the thing, right? I think there's a major like miscommunication in the traditional web design model. And I think that's where the wheels fall off. I think traditionally, like if you go client goes to a web designer or developer, they actually expect you to write the content. Mm -hmm. They think, okay, I'm going to pay you $10,000 and I'm just going to give you my name and my business name. And then you're going to magic all the information out of the brain, write it all and put it all together for me. And I mean, that that's just crazy pants, right? I mean, it's it's crazy. Yeah, mine so are coming with the two thousand dollar budget, wanting all that to stuff. My clients, right? it's like, well, know your business. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, when when you're very clear about it, like I'm super, as you've said on my website, I'm super clear about it. I'm like, you give me everything up front. I just build your website. I just bring that all together. When you're super clear about it, actually, people do get all their bums and get the content to you. Um, it's just they, they didn't realize that they had to do it in the traditional model. It's all about setting those expectations. Yeah. Now, I do want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up here pretty soon. So when you get to, how often do you get to build day or close to build day and realize you need to reschedule with the customer? Because I imagine you're somebody that's setting out a schedule pretty far in advance and yeah. Uh, this yeah. job affects the next job and the next job and so on. So there's kind of that domino effect. So what kind of safeguards do you have in place and how often does that happen? 
So, yeah, I mean, uh, depending on the time of year and just, you know, the ups and downs of business or whatever, I can be booked anywhere from three to six months in advance. So, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. If somebody's day is tomorrow and they don't have their contact ready, um, I basically give them, as I say, normally check in about two or three days ahead of time so that I give them a little bit of time. And if there is stuff missing, I go back to them and I give them the option. I say, you can push it forward and this is the next available date when I can fit you in. Or I can build it with lorem ipsum or you can pull your finger and get the content to me in the next two days. You decide. <laughs> you know, it's not my website. I didn't pay for it. I'm either building it in two days time or in two months time. Generally, they find the content within the yeah. next two days. Yeah, I'm not sure because it's, they're it's uh, funny front. how that works. Yeah. That's exactly right. So they've paid up front. They've invested. They want it yesterday. This is the thing that I was saying about my, my kind of client. They're already ready. They've, they've got the photographer lined up. They know when the images are going to be edited. The copywriters are working on the copy. They know that they schedule like this. They want to launch that offer on this there's a small window in between that's my client man this makes me super inspired to go out and find those clients <laughs> yeah. matt do you do you have any uh follow-up questions here before we wrap it up here shortly no just a, a follow-up uh, uh comment is just like you know clients that do have their their shit together it just makes it so much easier i mean um the very first time I ever hit that was uh, it was a resort up in um, up in Vermont, and they gave me a, uh, a login to a website that had literally every piece of content that I would ever dream of needing, every format for a logo, like you know, hundreds of uh, of either stock photography that hit like that uh, that was aimed at their brand or you know photography of their property, like everything was just right there in one spot. And I mean, just that alone allowed me to close that project so much sooner. So yeah, I think that uh, that prep work before exactly. all of this is is ideal. And that's for for people that are building sites, you know, that take a couple of weeks or a day. It's it's all that planning in the beginning yeah. that really solidifies how it's going to end. Yeah, and yes. I imagine people are going to start doing the same thing I did when I first heard this, and that's start running a calculator in their head or physically getting out a calculator and saying, okay, you know, you can afford to do websites. Yeah, you can afford to do websites for cheaper if you can get them done in a day. Right. Okay, how many days a week can I build a website? And then you start adding all these things together and you go, holy crap, that's a lot more money than I was making before, you know? And you know what? You get better clients. You get more excited. I mean, honestly, I've never loved this business as much as I have in the last, you know, three years of, of doing this model. And my clients just get better and better because I'm getting better and better at what I do, you know. And um, my work it just begets more work, you know, um, because you do so and so site, and then everybody wants their site, you know. So it's gotten to the stage where I have a client booked a couple of weeks ahead from now one of these first VIP people that have signed up. And literally she sent me screenshots in her Word document of like three different sites that I've done. I want it to be like this person's blog and like this person, you know. So that's quite amazing. Like when I first started doing this, I would get, you know, screenshots of other people, other designers' work to try right. and use inspiration. Now more and more, I get people who are contacting me saying, you did so-and-so site, I just love it. I just want you to create something like that for me, you know. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. You get the right kind of clients. Yeah, it's true. So, I mean, good work begets good work, but when you do start niching down and this is just, you know, repeating that again and how important it is, you know, and don't rush it, like let it find you. But yeah. I mean, all of these people in the, the, the same industry in the same niche, like they're all going to be talking to each other. So, I mean, it's, it's not only beneficial in that you look like an expert in that particular field because you are, but everybody's going to be talking to each other and they all, you know, they all, they all uh, fly in the same circles. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Chantel, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you and connect with you online so they can follow up with you if they need to, or, or do like I did and maybe take a look at the prep guide, uh, uh, secretly <laughs> and, and kind of yeah, steal you can go to my website. <laughs> 
feel free to go to my website. Um, like uh, many other people on the admin bar, my website's been copied a few times. Feel free to go and take inspiration. Try not to copy it word for word, okay? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> or pixel for pixel. Yo, yeah, pixel for pixel. Maybe change the images out. <laughs> yeah, at least. Swap out the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, it's, one day webs with the one <laughs> so one day webs.com and you can always find me on facebook um i do try and, and have a bit of an active instagram but it always falls apart because i'm too busy and i haven't outsourced my social media yet but um yeah face, facebook and my website are two of the places you can catch me Very cool. Well, that's awesome. I really appreciate you coming on the show. And, and like you said, you're, you're a part of our community and I appreciate you being in there. And I'm sure if people want to follow up uh, on this episode in those comments, you'll, uh, you'll sure to follow up with them. And I, I just really appreciate you sharing all this knowledge with us. I think it's super inspiring for people. And like you said, if, if you're the kind of person that this really appeals to and you think that you can do something like this, it is absolutely possible to do this. And we have living proof right here with us today. So, Awesome. All right, guys. Well, that is it for today. So remember that if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share the content, subscribe to the podcast and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time and it greatly helps support the show. So that is all for now. And we will see you inside the group. halfway through the episode, my foot goes completely to sleep. So I'm going to get off of my foot now.